hello hopefully all of you are doing good now from this video onwards we will try to work on a new playlist on uh, splunk ui toolkit now what is splunk ui toolkit so if we see the different dashboard building frameworks or splunk ui building frameworks splunk has so we already have uh, discussed about the simple xml dashboard right where you will just use xml to build the ui of the dashboard now there is another version of it like with xml you can use javascript and css as well right so it's similar technologies like simple xml it's, it's called basically the simple xml extension or js extension where we use basically xml javascript and css to create dashboards we also talked about very recently the dashboard studio right where we predominantly used the json to create the dashboard right so what there we are uh, still now dashboard studio don't have the capabilities of using js uh, and css in it right now dashboard studio makes our life much more easier in that way like we can do everything from the ui itself there is very less amount of stuff you have to do from the json backend right now there is another way you can create dashboards, single page apps in Splunk, which is called the Splunk UI toolkit. Okay. Now it comes with a very good amount of packages, which you can use to create very nice UI, even like whatever you are currently seeing as in, in, in your Splunk deployment. So we can basically create those kinds of ui as well using splunk ui toolkit so it basically comes up with some react packages as well as some predefined css with them so you basically uh, the main concept behind this one is like it will be like a component wise so let's say you want to create a to-do list right so that to-do list you can you'll be basically developing in react and jsx those technologies and then basically you can integrate those in your splunk apps and even you can create full-fledged Splunk dashboards, visualizations over there as well using the Splunk UI toolkit. But only thing is that like it, it's mainly they have opened it for developers. So uh, there will be very much less dag and drop functionalities available. Mostly you will be doing coding over here and mostly you will be using React over here. Okay. So we will see all the different packages, how to use it, how to create components, how to create Splunk apps using Splunk UI toolkit. So hopefully that will be fun as well. So if we just take a very brief about the different things come up with Splunk UI toolkit, right? So as I said, like it, it mostly the React UI over there, right? Which basically comes up with different components or packages. If we see, if we talk about in, in terms of Python, programming so there are would be a lot of different packages which will we can Im import it in our code and then use it accordingly we'll see that one as well okay so you basically the ui react ui is a library of components for building user interface that are based on the splunk design system specification now apart from that as i said it also has packages for full-fledged dashboard development which is called basically the dashboard framework right so which basically you can use to build dashboard over here similarly for visualizations as well even you we can you can bind data using using domain specific language so we will we will see that one as well now apart from these things like the visualizations dashboard framework or or simple react ui you have the option of it comes up with basically the build tools the code quality check tools unit test tools as well and other utilities over here as well which we will use slowly in our in our demo as well so today what we'll do is we will try to understand how what are the things you need to set this up in your local environment so now in this video i am using windows probably i will be creating another video for linux based system as well but the approach will be same over there okay so so if we just talk about the basic thing you need to work with splunk ui toolkit is the node.js okay and yarn now as you know like yarn is just another package just like our npm node node packet manager right so if we have these two things we can we can easily start working on ui toolkit now if we go to node.js 
website so according to your operating system you can install that latest version over here currently i'm using latest version of node as well so if i just show you so once you install the node.js so there will be a node.js command prompt created okay so now if i just see the version of it so node version right so currently i am using 19 19.1 as you can see it over there and there is a whenever you will be installing node so npm will be also installed over there right so npm version is also you can see it over there is this one 8.19.3 now you also need yarn as well now you can install yarn as through npm so if you go to this one website yarn website so you can just install it via npm so this is the command npm install global yarn so it will be installing globally yarn package right so now i have already done this one as well so if i just say yarn version so it is currently 1.222 over here okay so with this basic settings you are basically ready to go to work with splunk ui toolkit now the approach we will be taking today is if you see it this is the their documentation link now i will be providing this link in my video description as well so over there if you see it like they have two tutorials one is creating a component a standalone component and that's the beauty of react there right so you can use reusable components and then you can use it in different applications and you can create splunk app as well okay now whatever component we will be creating over here basically we will be creating a to-do list we will follow this particular stuff as well then once we got an idea about how how it works probably we will build our own stuff as well there okay so that's the approach we will take so we will create a to-do list here and that to-do list we will be using in this splunk app over here okay now to create a component so basically as we as i said firstly you need to have node.js and yarn install in your system now once you do that anywhere in your system if you see it like under d drive i have created a new folder called splunk ui toolkit anywhere in your system you can create the folder and manage it basically what it does is there is a package called splunk create so if i just go to api docs so if you see it like as i was showing in my ppt so splunk ui toolkit comes with lot of stuff like the react ui the unified dashboard framework the visualizations as well as like different icons pages parkline all these things have if you see it like they have separate separate react packages right which we can use it as well as there are a lot of utility packages as you can see it and build tool as well over here now this is the build tool we will be using first it's called splunk create so basically it create a workspace basically it's create a monorepo workspace for you then you can add component to that workspace there and use it accordingly okay so if i just follow the documentation they have it here right so we need to have some kind of folder which we already have it here in our splunk toolkit right so let's create a folder called my to-do list here okay so they have created if you see their uh, example over here they created under code folder but we will be creating under our demo folder over here okay so we will copy this and we will create a new folder over here called my to-do list so this will be our new so all the all the packages related packages programs will be having over here in this particular directory okay so now once we created that so what we'll be doing we will just call this guy over here splunk create over here okay so what we will do is okay we will close this one over here first we will go to our d drive okay and inside the d drive we will go to this particular folder my to-do list right here now over here we will be calling this this guy over here to initialize our 
monode po over here okay or the word whole package over here which where we will be whole workspace over here basically so if we just paste it over here and press enter as you can see it like it is saying the directory does not look like a monorepo so it will be basically initializing it and while initializing it it asks you for two informations two options basically whether you want to create a react component just like a to-do list or you want to create a full-fledged splunk app so as we are starting with the tutorial one we will be creating a to-do list a simple to-do list there right so we will select this guy over here a react component i will press enter over here now it will ask you for the repository name we will follow you can give any name over here we will follow whatever they have it in the in the tutorial over here so we'll give this repository name as my to-do list okay so we will paste it over here and we have to give the component name as well over here so let's the component give the component name as react to-do list over here okay you can give any name here okay so it has initialized the repository if we go over here it has created this packages folder and lot of files over here we will talk about this files later we will understand code wise even we will try to understand a bit of the react basics as well like how react react how to write react programs and all those stuff we will try to cover as well but for now it just we will just try to see it like as it has initialized a workspace over here right now if we just go back to the tutorial so before we start what you need to do is you have to basically run the setup so that it will install the packages the related packages to your system over here so in that same folder basically we need to run this yarn run setup which will basically install all the dependencies of that first build okay so we are in the same folder to do list if i just run yarn run setup it, it may take certain amount of time to install all those packages dependencies over here okay it's it's completed now as you can see it if we just go over here if you see it it created this node modules package over here we have all the dependent packages over here right and under the packages as you can see it so there is a react to do list folder also it has created over there right so this is the main component we have it so now whatever steps we will be performing so this step if, if i just go back to the documentation i will it will be easier to explain so if you see the next step is yarn run start demo so what will happen it will basically create a local web server to you so that you can see that particular component in your browser okay so whatever code changes you will be doing it whatever modifications you will be doing it in that code it will be automatically monitoring it and it will be reflecting in there so it will be very much easier to develop the component independently over there right so that is what we are going to do it now now as the component is inside our packages right as i was showing you over here packages react to do list so we have to go inside this folder now okay to run that demo so we'll go to we'll do cd then to do list now here couple of things see it basically reads this packages dot json so if i just open it here okay so if you see it the, in the inside this packages dot json there are a lot of options available like the build the link app lint start start app and start demo as you can see it over here this is what they are doing it over here as well yarn run start demo and what it is doing it basically calling this particular script over here right under bin folder build.js let us see that one as well under bin folder build.js right so it it basically calling this particular js file to execute everything and as you can see it like it basically checking whether which operating system you're working on either windows or linux environment based on that it's basically calling different 
scripts over here with different inputs over here okay so basically similar kind of input similar kind of script but based on the environment it is correspondingly calling this one now it requires this particular package as well cell js which should be installed with that whenever we have run that yarn run setup right so there is no other up like action needed for this one right and it has if you see this particular script has three inputs called build link and demo right and in the package dot json they have called it with demo so that, that is how the whole stuff working on over here right so let's try to run it and see it so we will receive some error we will try to see it so basically you have to remember you have to run this yarn run start demo inside this component here okay so if i just run it now so if you see it is having a lot of errors first of all it is saying e access error permission denied on this port i don't know like if you see like this particular port it is not able to see it which does not look like a port over here as well as you will see some kind of digital error unsupported error over here okay now to fix these two errors over here so what you need to do is basically i did it previously probably i will copy it from there so you have to basically set this option over here node options equals to open ssl legacy provider so this should fix this one so inside your package.json before calling this build.js we'll also have this one here with double ampersand this one right so if we if we run it now again okay as you can see it like it should be having only this e access port issue over here but other other issue is gone now to solve the port issue we have to see it i i spent quite amount of time over here to just to identify this one so if you see like this is the windows 32 environment this is this is the code it's which is running for our windows system right and we are basically giving an input called demo over here it's basically running this particular js file with this port and this is where the error is basically right so over here it's a variable but i think they have not initialized it over here anywhere in this code so if we can just give the code port number over here simple 8080 over here i think this should fix this one so if i just run it now again okay and as you can see it like it is saying the project is running at this one over here so let's see that let's see this one in our browser right so if i just run it if you see it is having this particular boilerplate code where you have this hello world like if i just click the button over here it is saying the button you have clicked one times right this is nowhere a to-do list but it's just a boilerplate code to start with and at least if you see it like we are just able to see the component in our browser without doing anything we have not go into the splunk level at all right so we are independently building that component then we will be integrating this one with our splunk app so that's that's the what we will do it slowly okay so probably in from the next video onwards what we will do is we'll try to understand which code is behind this one right and we will try to understand react a bit probably while doing this exercise itself we will try to see how react works okay and then probably like in the latter part we will see how to integrate this component into splunk app or it building the dashboard everything okay using splunk ui toolkit so probably this video is helpful see you in the next video